Hello friends, welcome again. Neo AS is bringing you the daily current affairs for prelims test. and uh, today on the second day of April 2018 we have a lots of facts, facts, facts and facts. So have a look on this PAD DC and tourism circuits and destinations, uh, it is a you know comprehensive tourism thing. We, have, we need to learn about Prasad and Hriday and about Sodesh Darshan scheme. Okay, then MICE and IPCB again under Ministry of, uh, I mean, uh, it's a tourism initiative. Totten Glacier in Antarctica, Interstitium, a new organ was found, and uh, Ituri conflict. As few, uh, there will be a question about Ituri conflict, nothing much. I'll just give a brief description of that, okay. So, let's have a deeper plunge, fine. PADDC is a centrally sponsored scheme, and 100% central assistance is given to the development of destinations and circuits and the Ministry of Tourism uh, is a nodal agency which extends its central financial to different states and different places uh, and union territory administrations to you know to develop the tourism and all those. So uh, there are like 5 crore for the development of destinations per destination and 8 crore for circuits. So that is the difference between all this and uh, now 3 things we have to learn. So that is all about PADDC, 3 things is one is Swadesh Darshan. So this Darshan is about circuits. We have 13 circuits. I will show you know uh, slide by slide of that each each category. So this Darshan is under the Ministry of Tourism which has 13 circuits. Circuits means connecting different places like we have the Himalayan circuit, Buddhist circuit, Northeastern circuit, ecological circuit like that. Second one is Prasad. Now, Prasad is a abbreviation for pilgrimage, rejuvenation and spiritual augmentation drive. Again, Prasad is also under the Ministry of Tourism, but it has destinations, not circuits. It has 13 cities or 13 pilgrimage sites. Alright. Next one is Hriday. Hriday is Heritage City Development and Augmentation Yojana. Now, that is something under Ministry of Urban Development, not under Tourism. So, that is the thing you have to remember. And there are 12 cities under Hriday scheme. So these are the three things uh, I will show slide by slide and you can pause the video and have a look at the you know, cities which are coming under that to avoid the confusion. So uh, first one is about Sodesh Darshan. Now, Sodesh Darshan has 13 circuits. Circuits like Northeast India circuit, Buddhist circuit, Himalayan, Himalayan coastal, then Krishna circuit, desert circuit, tribal, eco circuit, wildlife, rural, spiritual, Ramayana circuit and circuit and cultural and heritage circuit. So that is the 13 things uh, in the map uh, all the dots are given which are destinations and the you know the color wise you can know which are the circuits coming under this. The next slide is about Hriday cities. Now Hriday as I told it is under the Ministry of Urban Development that it, it is a development of heritage cities like you know if you go to Mysore you can see it is a you know one of the biggest heritage cities. So it is given the label itself is given it is a heritage city. So that kind of a development which comes under this urban development ministry is this Hriday scheme. So, uh, Amravati, Gaya, Dwarka, Badami, Puri, Amritsar, Ajmer, Kanchipuram, Velangani, Varangal, Varnasi and Madhura are the 12 cities that are coming under Hriday. Now, interesting thing is about Prasad. See, Prasad is having 13 uh, sites actually, 13 uh, you know, pilgrimation sites and almost every cities in the Hriday are coming under this Prasad. You know, uh, except Varangal and Badami. Every city is under Hriday, Hriday is coming under Prasad. So that is the main thing. Here we can see like Kamakya in Assam and Kedarnath. Except that, all, uh, except that uh, re if you replace that with the Hriday scheme, you can have, you can relate with that. So pause the video and have the quick look at uh, this, this cities. You can note it down. You can have a good look and uh, attach a map with that so that you can uh, have a pictorial memory of that. Okay. So these are the three things about Prasad, Hriday and um, this uh, Swadesh Darshan. The next news is also about uh, something related to tourism, something related to Ministry of Tourism. It is about two organizations, MICE and IC, IPCB. Now, sorry, IC, ICPB. Now, uh, MICE is the abbreviation for Meetings, Incentives, Conventions and Exhibitions. So, this is a government thing uh, which is like a gathering of all the, you know, all the stakeholders for the development of tourism. You have the travel agencies, you have the again tourism institutions are there, you have the research uh, organizations, you have many things, many stakeholders related to tourism development. 
So all these people when they gather, when they have conventions, when they have exhibitions and fairs and travel fairs and many such things. So that is a, that comes under this MICE. MICE is the organization that ha takes initiatives on that kind of thing. So meetings, incentives, conventions and exhibitions. Now ICPB is India Convention Promotion Bureau. Now that is an NGO actually, not a government organization or government institution. That is an NGO under the patronage of Ministry of Tourism. So that is the thing, there is a difference between that. Rest, the function is uh, all over the same. ICPB also does all these meetings and you know all the stakeholders. They do it in a commercial way actually. This MICE is something policy tank, think tank and they will give this directions to the ICPB and who will implement that or uh, that commercial part of that will be done by ICPB. So what they does, they will contact all the members who are there in the foreign, you know overseas Indian tourist travel agents are there, tourist departments are there. They will contact, contact with that and they will promote all the you know, Indian tourism and you know worldwide to give a picture of India abroad. So that is the main thing ICPB does. So have a thorough statement wise knowledge about both this. Okay, I am moving on to the next one. Next one is about a glacier melting. Actually, we have already learned about Antarctica. I have, uh, in one of the previous videos, I have shown the map of Antarctica and certain places, you know, where the center, where the South Pole comes and what are the islands gathering, what are the bay and uh, seas gathering that, I mean, surrounding that. So, uh, refer that map or have a look at a new map or whatever. But this Toten Glacier is again in the eastern part of Antarctica. It is one of the largest and biggest uh, glacier in Antarctica and uh, it contributes much fresh water to the ocean. So by that itself we can know so if melting, uh, if, if a glacier contributes a very much large amount of water to the sea, that means its melting also causes very high sea level rise. So that is the thing. So uh, this is, this came in the news because uh, you know its melting has been you know intensified. More melting is happening and it, it is resulting in a you know, a, a, a major intensified uh, rise of sea level. So that is the thing. So uh, again, all, all this IPCC and uh, national, this um, Paris Climate Agreement, UNFCC, we know all those things. And we know the consequences of global warming, uh, which results in a sea level rise. So by 2100, that is after, after, uh, at the end of the century, uh, IPCC predict that uh, the rise in sea level will be like 22 to 98 centimeters. So it's like 98 centimeters, just imagine, almost a meter, okay. So that is the thing here. So uh, we have to re, uh, reduce that. Now two main reasons for this global, uh, you know, the sea level rise is, one is the expansion due to the temperature. Now temperature increases and 90% of the atmospheric temperature change or heat is absorbed by the oceans. Uh, you know, uh, emissions causes increase in atmospheric temperature. That atmospheric temperature is absorbed by, 90% of that is absorbed by the ocean. Now ocean has water, it will get easily expanded. So when expand, expansion happens, the volume increases. So that is the one reason. Second reason is again the melting of ice. Melting of ice will contribute more water to the ocean. So both, both the two reasons are just because of this emissions and the heat, atmospheric heat increase. So these two are the main topics of UNFCC who, which, who are trying to make different contributions and change it. So, so that is the thing about this, uh, have a look at the map of Antarctica again, revise it, okay, to have a good knowledge. Next news is about a new new organ that has been found out by scientists, its name is interstitium. Uh, by the name itself we can know, interstitium. There is a fluid called interstitial fluid, you know, our, our cells and tissues and the area between cells or tissues is filled by this inter interstitial fluid, lymphatic fluid or interstitial fluid, maybe it can, some kind of a plasma or water, whatever. So uh, interstitial spaces filled by fluid, that is, now the scientists say that they form an organ under the skin. So that organ is called interstitium. Now uh, some of the scientists who found out this, they are telling that uh, this can be the biggest organ. So uh, presently, uh, internally speaking, Presently, liver is the largest organ, right? Liver is the largest organ inside the body. And outside the body, skin is the largest organ. Skin is the largest organ, you know. So, if interstitium, interstitium comes under the skin and it forms a big organ, if, if it gets a tag of an organ, that means it, it will become the biggest organ in the human body. Now, uh, it is not yet finalized. Many, many group of scientists are opposing that. They are telling it is not an organ. You can't give an organ category to that. But some are saying that, yes, it can be given an organ. Now, what is... Interstitial. Interstitium, as I said, under the skin you have the epidermis, 
under that you have many cells and tissues different types of cells and tissues now between this cells and the epidermis you have a space which is filled by this interstitial fluid now that if taken as a big organ that organ is called interstitium and uh, again i said it will be filled by this fluid and uh, you know all the major lines wherever there is epidermis like linings of the lungs linings of the esophagus linings of the food pipe and many uh, wherever there is a lining of epidermis you have that this interstitium so again that is why this forms uh, a, a matter of importance now uh, the proteins present in that is collagen and elastin all these things are uh, you know uh, maybe maybe or hypothesis it is not uh, they didn't ha they don't have a 100% documented proof of that but uh, they they state that this can be the protein present this can be the largest organ like that so that is why uh, just remember some things it is a new organ that's all you have to remember about this thing okay so uh, before winding up uh, now ituri conflict is it's a topic in your um, material you can read that i have made it in a question so that you can you know relate that ituri conflict recently heard in the news is associated with which of the following countries democrat Democratic Republic of Congo, Nigeria, Somalia, Egypt. So, uh, to speak, uh, one of the questions in the your your prelims series was about four, uh, three, three or four conflicts and the region associated with that. I have included this Ituri also in that one. And uh, actually, this is about to to wherever conflict happen, there will be an ethnic you know ethnic discrimination or one ethnic versus an, another eth ethnic group. So that is where always conflict happens. So this is. also a particular type of conflict where there is a farmer group and there is a herder group now herders will have cattle sheep and goats and such things they need grasslands for the you know uh, grazing and the farmers will have their own cultivation land so when the herders come and conquer this uh, the farm areas they will uh, obviously the farmers and herders will have a conflict now this particular thing also also same thing where a group of farmers lendu farmers they are called lendu farmers and group of herders called hema herders now both of these had this you know sharing of land problem and they started conflict which led to a tragic color many many people died recently also like 50 people died in that this incident so this is even considered as a first world war of you know africa that much uh, importance it is so uh, that is the main thing in the material it is given uh, have a good look at the history of all these things and here the answer is actually democratic republic of congo but uh, please read the material so i am winding up here see you next day Have a nice day.